Australian government announced it had ordered an unspecified number of naval strike missiles through an accelerated acquisition program. The Norwegian defense company, Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace will manufacture and supply the missiles that will be used from the Anzac-class frigates and Hobart-class destroyers of the Royal Australian Navy. The contract was worth 48 million US dollars. Naval Strike Missiles is a fifth-generation long-range precision strike missile that uses composite materials meant to give them stealth capabilities. Weighing slightly more than 400 kilograms and a range of 185 kilometers, the missile will be able to fly over and around landmasses, travel in sea-skim mode, and then make random maneuvers in the terminal phase, making it harder to stop by enemy countermeasures. The General Electric T901 Improved Turbine Engine finished first engine to test requirements. This engine will be used by Sikorsky Raider X that are in race for the future attack reconnaissance aircraft. The U.S. Army in 2020 has narrowed its future rotary aircraft choices to the Bell 360 Invictus and the Sikorsky Raider X. In March 2020, the designs from Bell and Sikorsky were selected to proceed to Phase 2 of the competition, and this phase will end with a government flight test evaluation no later than 2023. The program was initiated by the United States Army in 2018, to develop a successor to the Bell OH-58 Kiowa Scout helicopters. The same two contenders are also in race to compete for the future long-range assault aircraft, which will replace the Sikorsky's UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters. The Sikorsky Raider X is a compound helicopter concept with two coaxial rotors and a single pusher propeller. The Raider X concept was derived from the earlier Sikorsky S-97 Raider, and is designed to use a single General Electric T901 engine that is expected to have a maximum speed exceeding 460 km per hour, with a service ceiling greater than 9,000 feet. The cockpit uses side-by-side -side seats instead of the tandem seating typical of American attack helicopters. Internal weapons and sensors are mounted using a modular system, in accordance with program specifications to anticipate future upgrades. The Bell 360 Invictus use a single engine and a four-blade rotor that will have an articulated rotor system. The design shows a two-seat tandem cockpit, with sighting optics and laser designator, a 20mm cannon gun turret below the cockpit, and missiles mounted on integrated launchers. The General Electric T901 turboshaft will be the main power plant, and will have cruising speed in excess of 330 km per hour. Flight testing of these prototypes were expected to commence in October 2023 but now delayed to 2024. Latest video shows that the Korean defense manufacturer has started taxiing and engine tests on its first prototype KF-21 Burmi fighter jet. The first flight is expected to happen later this month. Korea Aerospace Industries rolled out the first prototype aircraft under development for the Korean fighter e-experimental program, which aims to develop a multi-role platform that will replace the Republic of Korea Air Force's aging F-4 Phantom II and F-5 Tiger II aircraft. The Korean Air Force is expected to acquire 40 KF-21s by 2028, and another 80 aircraft by 2032. The KF-21 Burmi is a South Korean 4.5 generation fighter aircraft development program that aims to produce an advanced multi-role fighter for the South Korean and Indonesian Air Forces. The airframe is stealthier than any fourth generation fighters, but does not carry weapons in internal bays like fifth generation fighters, though internal bays may be introduced later in development. The twin-engine prototype was officially unveiled in April 2021, is powered by two General Electric F414 GE 400K engines, is expected to have a maximum takeoff weight of 56,300 pounds with a payload capacity nearly up to 17,000 pounds. The first prototype is designated as Aircraft 1, is scheduled for maiden flight in 2022 following ground testing. The aircraft will feature three hardpoints under each wing for weapons and external fuel stores, while missiles can also be externally carried under the fuselage. Production is expected to commence from 2026, with full rate production following from 2028. Agency for Defense Development and Hanwha Systems will locally develop an AESA radar, which will be capable of detecting and tracking more than 1,000 targets simultaneously. Hanwha Systems will also supply an electro-optical targeting pod and an infrared search and track system. The aircraft will also feature terrain following and avoidance systems from Israel's Elbit Systems, and several critical systems from Collins Aerospace, including its environmental control system, which comprise air conditioning, cabin pressurization and liquid cooling systems, as well as engine start components. It will be armed with a range of European and US-made weapons, with planned integration of systems such as the Deal Defense Iris T Short Range Air-to-Air Missile, and MBDA Meteor Beyond Visual Range Air-to-Air Missile, Raytheon's Laser Guided Paveway 2 Bombs, as well as several direct attack munitions. 
Indonesia is the only foreign partner in the KFX development program, which is known as the Indonesian Fighter E Experimental Program, and had earlier committed to paying 20% of total development costs, although it has reportedly fallen behind on payments and is renegotiating its position. Korea Aerospace Industries is planning to develop a new smart factory to support the production of the KF-21 platform, with an investment of around 87 million US dollars over five years. The smart manufacturing system will leverage on fourth industrial revolution technologies such as artificial intelligence and big data analytics. Korea Aerospace Industries aims to localize production of approximately 65% of KF-21 components, involving the participation of over 700 domestic companies. Thanks for watching. For more updates on defense, economics, finance and geopolitics, stay updated for new videos.